So we're just going to continue with blocking in this. Got to zoom out a lot because otherwise you will don't you will miss the big shapes. And it's not about making accurate shapes. It's about making ones that look good. Especially in a landscape, you're not trying to get a likeness of someone incredibly down. You can play with a lot of the proportion of things. Let's not try and make everything so accurate that it takes ages. <laughs> so obviously you can get the brush size down small if you want to redraw a line or redefine the edge of something. So this this effectively is an eraser, although the eraser is also, believe it or not, an eraser as well. But the eraser in this acts in another kind of way, which is not the same as this scrubbing of this, using a light pressure with this particular brush. But uh, maybe we'll talk about the eraser at some point, but it's fairly, you know. I mean, it is interesting. I don't know if I've ever had a user painting app or anything where you actually erase and paint with the same brush or this, you know, even without changing, just using the pressure. Although I'm sure in some apps you can set an app, uh, set the pressure, you know, to modulate it being an eraser or something like that. But this is just set up in this way, which I think is wonderful and interesting. I mean, I don't know what to say about this. I'm just painting what I'm trying to do. There's not much to say. I mean, if I want to go in, you know, let's just go in hardcore with the pressure and make it for this area, just go in with the pressure. And you can see how rich and, you know, it gets that very, very um, rich black that, you know, but it's a warm warm feeling black that you get when you just put burnt umber on a canvas. Obviously if you wanted to use something that's more like raw umber you'd move it towards more of the green side of the spectrum here so that's more like that's almost like a greenish raw umber. You could don't have to have it as if I move this over here you know you get a less a less saturated form so if I was going to do like a Richard Schmidt like he sometimes paints in the underpainting in color um, you know you could do this area gets this color under painting, blah, blah, blah. And this other area, you know, the the the, uh, the roof gets its own under painting that's a slightly more, you know, purplish color. So, I mean, that's another way to do it. That's not a way I tend to use, um, but it is great to do that. It's just a, maybe a bit more advanced for me, a bit too advanced. we must think just in terms of a nice graphical shape that's just a big black 
area but obviously it's a area that's in shadow maybe it's good as well if you you know if you want to make sure that you stick to nice shapes then draw out the edges beforehand and you have more tendency in my opinion to stick to them rather than end up getting these woolly overworked edges of things which i really you know have a massive tendency to do very very bad you know there's people like sergeant and Carl Moll, I studied Carl Moll recently, who, you know, they're just incredible at keeping something a wonderful, nice shape. They don't over fiddle. That seems to be coming down here. That's far too low. Yeah, over fiddling is probably the greatest devil in all of painting, really. And I mean, in this, in this app, over fiddling obviously it shows up as it does in a real painting especially when you start getting into the thicker paint later on but obviously the good thing about digital is you can completely you know in real life you can do this as well you know just scrub the canvas as sergeant always said if you don't like the way it's going and if you feel like you are losing control of the painting, you need to just scrub the whole canvas because you will save so much time putting in a better underpainting and putting in a better start than trying to change a terrible start or change a start that went wrong. Um, and then you'll get more and more stressed and you get, you know, it's actually emotionally very tiring to try and save a bad painting it's a lot more rewarding and better on your development to learn to destroy a bad start before it gets too bad. Obviously there's a point where you might not realise that you've started to get the painting get worse and that's why it's important to not paint for too long you should always try and paint for you know maybe two hours at the most before you have a significant break because if you try and paint for five hours you will certainly lose perspective on what you're doing and you will end up you're not saying that you have you're not saying you're you're you know damned to but you are very likely to make mistakes that you know particularly overworking or you lose perspective on what looks good it's way better to come back with a fresh eye. Painting is not just about doing a big marathon where you grind hardcore for hours and hours. The best paintings are pretty much done in, you know, they, they have a freshness and a spontaneity to them, which comes from pre great preparation, in my opinion, but it's uh, not about grinding at the canvas for, for hours and hours at a time and adding in every tiny detail you can or just overworking. Overworking is just such a, you know, it's a terrible, terrible curse. It's probably the worst thing I think you can do in painting. I probably rank that above well. I don't know, incredible, really bad structural and anatomical structural problems in a human figure is pretty bad as well for me, but... I mean, if you overwork something, then it doesn't really matter how nice the composition is or how even how, um, you know, what good subject matter it is because it just ends up feeling like a dead work. Let's try and make this actually... So you, I've got three levels of, of light here. So you've got this very dark area in the, this side. So 
looks brilliant. I love not my painting, but the way that the paint takes to the, you know, the, it just looks so nice. I will certainly use this app to paint most everything from now on. And it took me a while to, I actually discarded this app for a long time because the, the weirdness of it um, put me off for some reason. Or not even the weirdness, just, just the, you know, I, I wasn't prepared to learn what, you know, I wasn't in the right mental space. I was probably learning 3D stuff or something. Yeah, lovely. Well, you must think it's a nice decoration, um, decorative scheme. A nice graphical thing before it's a painting of a house or anything. It always starts, it's, it's more likely to, to succeed if you see it as a nice decoration first. But it is easy to get a mid, you know, if I want to get this mid value here, I'm just using a natural feeling pressure on the iPad, on the on the pencil. It's very easy to get the darkest tone. It's maybe not with this brush set, with this, with this pressure setting, it's maybe not, they've, they've made it so it's not so easy for me to make the very very lightest tone which is essentially the eraser but that's just great i mean it's good because i don't want to be accidentally scrubbing away unless i want to unless i've made a particularly egregious mistake <laughs> let's put in these little slats Oh wait, let's make this one thing. Because that is a big shadow underneath this tree. So obviously when I'm using just one color, this is creating a warm, you know, underpainting. So this is going to inform the color choices I try and make for the whole rest of the painting, as I did with the earlier one that maybe you saw. Everything is going to be warm. And when you're building the color harmony, it's always going to be in relation to what's going on underneath. Um, and if you can feel if something is out of key, as it were, um, hopefully. And obviously, I'm also trying to think in, when, I, when I'm planning the color scheme, I'm also trying to think, well, what's the complement of this color? So obviously, this is a, you know, a reddish orange thing going on underneath. <clears throat> so grainy. Um, but it's going to be a warm green. It's not going to look like the reference. That's the thing. I don't want to. I'm not taking any real information about the colours from the reference here, other than you know there's a, other than there's a warm light that's falling on things, which is sunlight. Maybe I will see what this looks like to put this tree here. Oh no, that's bad. It's a bad shape. And you can double tap, obviously you two finger tap to undo in this. I'm sure you, if you're using this, you realize that. See, we're making some mess ups here. So I need to turn the harness. If I want to scrub this really back, you know, let's just, let's not even make this a bad area. So I'll scrub it back. 
and I can change the pressure again. I mean, obviously you can do that in real painting and it behooves you to. We've got to decide if this tree is this, this mass is this tree. This is a chimney stack. Too big, too big. There, unfortunately in this app there is as far as I know no way to flip horizontal by the way which is a problem in some ways but then you know there's nothing stopping you from literally putting your iPad up to a mirror I have a huge mirror because I always have a terrible tendency to um, get the uh, symmetry of things really badly wrong That looks fine. Now we have to resolve the fiddly fence. I mean, it's, you know, just have some charm about it. It doesn't have to be an architectural drawing. This fence is not an architectural drawing anyway. It's falling apart. Oops. Maybe these strokes are not so, maybe they need to be fatter. But I mean, this brush is one of the only brushes that actually goes down to a small, a very small size. And you'll find that you may be a little frustrated in terms of um, what brushes you know don't size down properly but i mean it is it's literally is what it is you just find a you know you you understand that's just well, the way they made it there's no brush engine there's no there's no brush customization there's no brush engine um, changer or anything so you're um enjoy what they give you which i really like honestly i hate Bro procreate brush engine i hate the I hate the customization of the brushes in Procreate. There's so many settings it makes zero, zero sense intuitively at all. Ooh. Let's resist the urge to go in and over fiddle areas that have just been done just fine. Even though everyone wants to do that, because if you, if it's interesting, if you actually add too much detail or too many different pieces of pattern, then you actually destroy the strength of the painting. Obviously, that's what you know. Modernist abstract work kind of was more about getting that general. You know, there's nothing stronger than. A Mark Rothko colour field painting. 
because its strength is obviously its minimalism. Because if you if you it's like in audio mixing or whatever, if you turn you know if if you let one element really shine in the mix, then you have have to necessarily you know reduce the power of other elements. You can't have everything sounding amazing. You have to have you know so that's like why Monet. You know, people say the drawing in Monet is not good. Um, obviously, Monet could draw very well if you see his early academic work or whatever, but he chose to, you know, the, the structural integrity of the drawing was secondary to him because he was all about, obviously, the colour, the harmony, and the effect. You know, it was about the effect or the impression. And it's weird, you can't, if you try... You know, I'll say, oh, I'm going to do Monet, but I'm going to have good drawing. You can't really do it. It doesn't really fly. Nearly there. Oh, see, there's white stuff in front of this fence post now, so they're not going to be so obvious. They're almost blending into the shape of this, um, although there are some foliage in front, they're blending into the shape of this white house. Obviously, the less strokes you use, the better. You know, but I'm not one of those people who's like, you know, Machiavellian about every stroke. I try and do it based on a feeling. But then the more you second guess yourself, the worse it gets. So, you know. The first instinct is usually right, and the more you have to do, you know, if, if you can sense it's wrong, then just destroy it. That's unfortunately the problem of you know years of painting is you, you know, that, that that's the good thing of years of painting. You develop an instinct about what is wrong earlier on, and how to nip it in the bud earlier on. Now in a second I'll show you maybe what another layer does. So that to me is a fine underpainting beginning stage. You don't want to overthink that. It's you know it's a good I think that's fine as a painting on its own. And in a second I'll talk about um I'll talk about the other brushes. I'll talk about that. Just to quickly before I go, talk about this layer. 
if you want to add another layer, obviously plus layer, and now this, this does now not affect what's going on underneath, so I don't need to worry about scrubbing out my work here. I can simply apply a transparent other layer. So if I wanted to maybe reinforce some of these um, tonal decisions or whatever, I can add like a light layer that goes over the top of something. Um, so if I wanted to maybe make this fence in general a little bit darker, maybe make this one value less, um, and you know, I'm just going over the top of this very light pressure, and because it's not, there's nothing underneath. I wouldn't. I'm not erasing anything. I'm not scrubbing out my work. Um, and this means I can re, you know, I can, I can kind of reinforce some of these shadow areas and make them a bit more unified. Even though. It's interesting, you know, I don't want to too, do this too much because it keeps the interest and keeps the illusion of detail. Uh, I don't know, who was it who said about the illusion of detail? Maybe that was a Paul Ingbertson video or something. Obviously Sargent is the best at, you know, making an illusion of detail in his work. But I mean, at this point, it is kind of about the choice, you know, it's about a graphical choice. Maybe I don't want to make that tree in the background too dark because it feels, it feels further away. You know, I can't really see anything necessarily that's incredibly wrong here. Maybe this edge. Duh. Well, that's the end of that for now. I'll return to it later. Thanks.